Hello everyone, welcome to my Craftopia farming tutorial. I did one of these uh, a while ago, but I thought I'd refresh it, do it in uh, high definition. And we're going to cover everything from starting with wheat fields, to getting your farm plots, how to get seeds, how to improve those seeds and get all the way up to peaches, and automate everything that you would need to automate. So let's get started. I've got my workbench over here. This is where you'll build your wheat fields. You need log and straw for those. You can also build your farm plots here once you've achieved the appropriate age to build those. So let's just start out with some wheat fields. Just like anything, you're gonna place them. I'm gonna place these side by side, but I'm gonna show you a little bit of a trick on how you can actually stack these and save some space. So if you just build one of these slant, get a conveyor belt and have it the conveyor belt going toward the wheat field. So you're gonna be line everything up and then you're gonna place your wheat field on top of that conveyor so it drops right on top of the other wheat field. It, it's a little bit uneven, so if that bothers you, uh, there's tricks you can do where you can put a wall all the way on the back side and it'll help align that a little bit better. Um, but it still works the same, so it's it's just kind of aesthetic. You know, if you don't like that, the way that lines up, you can fix that. So now when you water these, it'll grow the wheat for all three stacks and you can harvest all three stacks at a time. I'm gonna use a sprinkler. You can also use a bucket of water, but the sprinkler is the best for automation. It just takes some buckets of water and some cog wheels. You can build it on your workbench once you reach the appropriate age. You place that there and the circle you see is the radius that the sprinkler will work. So anything inside that yellow line radius will get watered. So you can see I can add some more to this and it'll still get watered just from the one sprinkler. Now we're going to build our farming plot. It takes iron ingots, wheat, and sand. So you need the wheat from the wheat field to get started on the farming plot. So it's kind of a progression type thing. And I'm going to stick these right next to my wheat plots just so that that sprinkler will actually water my farming plots at the same time. Now you'll notice that nothing's growing there. Well, that's because I need seeds. But first I'm gonna go ahead and show that you can stack your farming plots also the same way you do your wheat fields. And I always recommend only going about three high. Uh, because of the limitations, it can cause things to despawn if you stack too many on top of each other. So usually three is the max that I would go. Now here's the seeds, the corn seeds, potato seeds, seed patty, which is rice. Uh, there's all kinds of other seeds. I'm going to show you over here how to get some seeds if you haven't already found them. There's uh, two easy ways to get basically what I call starter seeds. One is the goblins. Uh, any of the goblins that you face, they will actually drop seeds. So there's a little goblin camp over here. I'm on the island of the cove. Uh, you can find goblins pretty much on most maps. And there's a little seed bag that fell. So that's a potato seed. Another potato seed, there's a corn seed. I believe the shamans drop rice patties sometimes. Yeah, so they drop the seed patty, which is rice, essentially. There's another potato seed. So you can get plenty of seeds getting started. Skeletons, I think, also maybe drop seeds. But also the blacktail gull will drop seeds. So that one dropped the carrot seed. They can also drop apple seeds. Um, so that's another resource to you know get some seeds early in the game. So you see the level down in the bottom right says that's a level seven seed. Corn is level three, potatoes one, and the seed patty's five. And those levels are important 
Because if you want to get the best seeds in the game, which are the peach seeds, you'll need to improve your seeds and improve your crops. And you notice I, on this, I equipped those seeds and I just kind of threw them onto the farming plot. And as soon as I did that, my sprinklers start water, watering them and they start growing right away. To harvest crops, you just punch them or you can use a weapon, but I would just suggest punching them. This does damage your plot by 10 points and all plots have a 500 hit points. Uh, there is a way you can use the repair hammer. You can also build a reaping machine. Take steel, cogwheels, and a battery. The reaping machine is a way to automatically harvest your crops. There's other ways you can do it. You can use the uh, rotating saws, but those are kind of dangerous because they can get out and damage other things but the reaping machines will not damage anything about it so that's one of the best ways to harvest it or using the repair hammer you kind of set them on the edge and it will go through all the levels that you have stacked there as long as you don't go too high now using that reaping technology It'll auto harvest and you can auto gather everything into a container. I like using these large capacity containers. They've got the built in conveyor belt and you put an absorber on the front. So that way, as the crops are harvested, that absorber will draw in all of your crops into the container and automatically collect them. And this kind of helps you get around that drop limit. Because um, if you've got a lot of farms going on, if one plot gets harvested, it can actually cause some of your other crops to despawn before they actually get collected. So it's wise to kind of watch. And you can see the carrots kind of went into the container. I'm going to pick up those carrots. But it's you've got to watch those uh, the despawning or you'll lose a lot of crops that way. And the limits really affect Xbox the most. I'm also going to show that you can seed multiple at a time. So you, if you stand on the corners, you can seed both plots. And if you stand just right and you've got all four in a, in a quadrant there, you can actually seed all four of those. So just showing you that the large capacity container did suck in those carrots. They're in there. I'm kind of waiting for this reaping machine to go sometimes they get a little sticky and don't want to go there you go there goes that one and you can see it, the absorbers pulling them all in um, sometimes you'll have to get your spacing just right because it doesn't want to absorb them just right you can see some of them are still stuck so you may have to manually collect them or just kind of play around with your placement to get it to go into the machine the correct route So here's a setup. This is my one of my automations. Instead of using the, I use the auto cooker instead of the large capacity container. So I have it harvesting the wheat. It goes in the auto cooker, cooks it into wheat flour. And then on the back side, I'll show you that that wheat flour is getting absorbed into a chest, which is connected to an aging facility, which is producing bioethanol and then outputting that bioethanol into another chest. And this is how you build a very large bioethanol farm. Uh, I've got other videos that I can link to where I've condensed this down, not even using the auto cooker. And here's the seed extractor. So when you need more seeds, you can put your uh, actual carrots or peaches or tomatoes or whatever you have in this spend some gold and there's a chance it'll give you seeds it's not a 100 percent chance but it's pretty high chance that you can always get seeds out of this so you see i got six seeds and if you also notice here i've got a sprinkler behind a wall 
the sprinklers will go through walls, so you don't have to worry about everything being nice and neat there. So now we're going to talk about the breed improvement plant. The breed improvement plant is a way you improve crops. So when you put a crop in there, it'll show you the forecast or the chance that you'll get a better seed. So you can see a level seven carrot seed can become a level eight orange or grape or a level nine tomato seed. What you do is you keep working your way up the seed chain, producing better and better seeds until you get to peaches. And once you're at peaches, the peaches sell for a lot of gold and it's a great way to make quick gold. If you've seen any of my playthroughs, you'll always see me try to work my way up to peaches. So that way I don't have to worry about gold production at all. Um, it's just not a problem when you try to get to those ages that require like the 10 million, 30 million gold. The peaches are the best way to make that money fast. And they'll become the selectively bred seeds. You just hit X on those on Xbox to essentially use them. Uh, what that'll do is show you what seed came out of that. So you can see I've got some sugar cane, which was a lower chance, actual lower level six. I got some carrot seeds. I got tomato seed, which was nine, which was what I was going for, and some pumpkin seeds, which was level seven, which didn't really help me. But now I can upgrade my crop and grow tomatoes, go through that process again, and keep working my way, improving crops, plant them, harvest them, improve them, and that constant cycle until you get up to peach seeds so that you always have the best crops, you're making the most money, you sell them at the market, you get a nice little farm going and have a good cash flow, so money is not going to be a problem in this game. And if you always make it to the next level, you can just sell the seeds uh, that you get. They they go for pretty decent gold themselves, so you don't actually have to use them, or you can save them. Um, there's some missions for the harvesting the grapes and some of the other stuff that you you know might want to save those seeds for completing some of those side missions. You can see you can even harvest the peach. You know, try to improve it. It really won't improve it. It actually gives you a chance to go down a level to get pineapple and coconut seeds. But the goal should always be to get peach seeds and try to do as much as you can there. I'm just going to show you, um, get some, try to get some peach seeds just to kind of show you what the value of those really are and how you can basically take one peach seed and make a lot of money out of that. You can also offer your seeds uh, rather than, you know, selling them. There are some slight bonuses that you can get from your picture book for those. So that's another thing to possibly do with your seeds if you've already got a good enough gold flow going. You can see I'm gathering a pretty good amount of wheat just from this setup with very little work. And there you can go, I, I seeded all of those. I'm gonna go over here and improve these tomato seeds just so you can see. I'm looking to get eggplants or lemon, those are level 10, so that's the next level. I only have a 1% chance, so I'm gonna let that go. All right, well that just about wraps up everything I wanted to cover in this episode. If you got any questions that you didn't see, you know, you didn't quite understand, drop a comment and let me know. Um, or if you see something that you want me to cover in a little bit more detail, drop a comment, let me know. I'll, I'll be sure to try to get that and get it covered. Uh, there's, you know, farming in this game is kind of essential for making gold. Uh, there are other ways to do it, but, you know, it's making gold is 
the best, easiest to do it is with farming, improving your seeds, selling your crops or selling the seeds, whichever you want to do. Yeah, you can pretty much automate this process. There's even ways that I've seen where you can automate uh, seeding and harvesting of your actual crops rather than having to manually do that part. It's a little bit trickier because it involves the multi-sling, which uh, you know is, is a hard blueprint to get, but it is possible so that you can fully automate your farming mechanism. The wheat process is probably the easiest part to automate just because it automatically regrows. You don't have to keep seeding that, but the other uh, crops, you know, they do require a little bit more care. Uh, the one thing I didn't cover in this episode was uh, growing herbs. Those are done in planters and different things. Uh, I may do a separate video for that. So if, if you need that also, you know, let me know. It's pretty much the same concept, except you're just going to use the planter rather than the farming plots. Well, that's all I've got for this episode. And as always, thanks for watching.